Hello everybody. Welcome to my channel. Uh, this is Sia Tepta speaking. So today uh, I'm going to show you how to draw a body perspective from uh, looking from the bottom up. So it's basically an anti view. So last week we were doing the top down from the head, body, and uh, looking from the bird eye view perspective. This one we are looking, uh, going to draw the body from the anti view perspective. So it's basically looking up. Uh, so you can see the body perspective, it's going to be bigger in the bottom and kind of taper up uh, on the top. So it's kind of like looking up. So um, like usual, we are. I am going to show you my process and breaking down of what uh, technique am I using or you know you might need to draw some perspective line to the vanishing point and uh, horizontal line and uh, this one is kind of basically three point perspective you can have to see the bottom so it's going to be three point perspective uh, in some way so um, if you have any question please post them down in the comment and or if you want just want to say hi or something then you can just do that or if you have any suggestion on uh, what kind of tutorial you want to see please let me know and also uh, you can if you want to I hope you guys enjoy the weekends and enjoy your coffee have a good day bye bye make this bottom down view or viewing from the bottom or we could call it the ant side view um, so before we see the actual drawing um, you might want to take some time to know the process of how this could be achieved easily um, all right so basically we have i usually start with the simple box but the box has to come with the real perspective or somewhat the very close to the real perspective not isometric but perspective um, so you can google the word isometric and perspective and see what's the difference are um, that would be kind of easier for me to explain because it's going to be long and it's pretty similar to the last video that you saw me doing from the top down view of the people so i'm just going to start drawing one person first and then i will add another person which will be in the same um type of or, or the same structure of the perspective and then they could add the third person or the fourth and depends on how close they are if they're closer to you then you're going to see the bottom of the foot here right and then goes up but uh, from there usually you can see the extreme view like foreshortening also but you have to kind of angle it up a little bit so it's like the the, the foreshortening of the, the arm and the foot that I did for the kick pose right but uh, in this case usually you won't see in the from the cinematic point of view um, because my job is to make animation and um, video games and cinematic and concept art uh, we don't usually see that extreme perspective from let's just say um, if you have like a foot here right and then there the, bo the body or whatever you don't usually see this view that much most of the time you see that type of view which you see some of the body because you want to see the buildings and all the con construction uh, in that scene also so everything like it depends a lot of you ask me question like how do I do extreme this extreme that or extreme action everything has to everything is relative so you have to think about the composition, especially in cinema uh, or in the video game cinematic or uh, that type of thing that are well thought out that you know people a lot of people are involved and they think what should be good so this would be the typical um, structure very common that you will see in perspective right it's kind of like uh, in the video game you could see like a guy stealth underneath and listen to these guys you see that a lot in maybe metal gear solid or um, um, the other one splinter cell or something those are pretty old all right so here if you see the pink line these are the line of the box that i started with so let's just start from the beginning uh, as you can see these are almost like a three-point perspective basically 
and usually you're gonna have to have if you're not sure like if you're not very accurate or if you don't know perspective that well i would recommend starting from the get-go so you have what like one point here the other point down here the other point way outside the frame so then you know that it's kind of the box will be tapered up and it's kind of tapered to the side um, you can kind of get away with the parallel line so let me uh, get started here I'm just gonna take this half line out this half would be pretty useful when you're trying to find halfway uh, or uh, the length of body in, in half size and these are the horizontal line horizontal line so you have to think of the primary uh, objective that you are going to do so you want to see a person from the bottom up so that would be an anti view and then first thing you do it you would find a uh, the, the vanishing point way up there so uh, so you get this type of line without the box and that line in the back would be uh, that, that this one is in the back this one's in the front so you kind of have that bottom box right and then the top box so that line with the top box and that would be your height right so I think I, I make this pink line a little off so let me correct here that should be to that line and that should be to that line okay just saw a little mistake there so that line draw all the way down so it should be like a rectangular shape in the bottom there so once you have that try to put a person all the way up to the shoulder um, would be easier for me or you can put it um, all the way in like all the person in the box but then you, you're gonna have to break it down into a part of it on, on top of the head but that would be kind of harder but I, I would say just put the whole body and then have the head kind of separate on the top would be easier and then because you're going to have to break down the box in half so you can easier get the body but um, you don't have to draw all the perspective line um, if, if you don't if you already know somewhat how perspective goes um, so you can just make an estimate guess like what I did because I did a lot of perspective drawing probably hundreds um all right so you have that line and then you probably want a horizontal line in some form you can start off like i start off this two line first you can start it off with just parallel line depends on whatever angle you want to do or if you have like usually I'll would, I would do um, in this manner like one corner is almost in the front because you can see almost like three-dimensional um, or to the side uh, but you can do it in the front front view that doesn't matter like if you uh, how to explain this you can do like that or would be a lot easier because if you're doing the front view since it it is from the bottom up you won't see the back because everything is tapered in the back you see what I mean right but if you do it the, if you make a corner in the front then it will make it easier for you to see the three-dimensional space and this all tapered tapered and you see the vanishing point all the way off the frame right so if you have the front then that wouldn't help you any uh, if any because you just have one plane so that would be and I think that's uh, that's why some of you kind of fall into that trap because you try to okay I'm trying to make this taper but I don't see any line that could help me because everything's tapered in the back and you don't see the line 
Or you could, you draw the line in the back, then that would help. And then you can kind of see. But if you draw it in the angle, it would make it easier for you to connect the dots. You know what I mean? These are <laughs> terrible drawings, sorry. Um, all right. So, anyways. And when you draw the parallel line of these two, then you can taper the, the tip of it or the directional that it's going to a little bit, right? So you can move this closer, leave this kind of wider apart. Uh, same thing with the line in the back. Um, this line, you can start out with parallel to this, and then this line all will have to go into the same vanishing point. So does this, and all direction goes in. So you see that the taper degree or the degree of that um, distance is not as narrow as the vertical line. So, and then you're gonna have to, this is almost like a three point perspective basically, but it is easier because you don't have to draw all the buildings. Um, so I, I would start out with another line, kind of intersect here, intersect here, and then another one intersect there. So you have one box here, which is there, right? So you have one side. You need three sides because you need the bottom also. And then when you see the last line, it's going to be easy because when you have already established this yellow line, the green line, you can easily just draw this line to intersect, draw this line to intersect to get the box. And um, another one would be the bottom part, draw this line to intersect. It's a little off, but still there. Um, and then draw this line to intersect. And they're all going to be tapered down onto the same vanishing point. So that's how you get the box. All right. So the box is an easy part. So once you get this box, you know what direction or how big uh, the bottom would be. The hard part would be the legs, um, how to get those cylinder in there and um, how to make an estimated guess. But since this one are not too extreme, you can kind of slowly go from here to the closer or to the more extreme one afterwards. Um, as you practice this more. So it's all about repetition. If you're doing more, you understand it more, you get more comfortable with it, then you'll be able to push it a little bit more, push it a little bit more by making the harder one, the more extreme one, right? But the one I'm showing you here is the most typical one. So you, you get to use them the most and most likely frame in the, um, like in the keyframe or in the concept art or in the maybe storyboard or whatever you might be doing. Um, so, and then when you want to find the waistline around the area of the waistline of the person, which you need that because you don't know whether, since they're not a typical proportion that you can kind of break it down to, you know, uh, half or, uh, or one third, um, I would suggest try to break this down in the box in half, but in half in perspective is different from in half in the normal flat plane. So you would need to find an X, which is uh, from this corner to that corner, from this corner to that corner on one plane, and the X on the other plane. Uh, this X is a little off. Let me see if I can fix that. Yes, tiny, oops, I was on the wrong layer. Okay. Just kind of make sure they're all in the corner, right? Then this middle part of the X is where the waistline would be. So you are going to have to draw this line through. And this line that's going to go through, going to have to go to the same vanishing point back here, which will be the same family line as the yellow line. So there, right? Maybe a little lower. There we go. And the other one on the other um, side. 
So two planes. What you need is you need three planes to get the three dimensional and the bottom one, which will be where the foot would actually stand on. So this um, plane would actually be the floor that you will be standing on. So if you expand this bottom grid, you have the whole floor. You can see what I mean. Just make those lines parallel and make sure that the line I'm drawing here would be parallel to that yellow line. And that line's going there, so same vanishing point. So this mm, a little off. Yeah, something like that. And then if you have another person, you could stand here and then you see the bottom. So, but it's kind of harder when you're trying to, you know, get just the body because those vanishing point, those dots, those vanishing point are going to be off the frame or far away from the frame. So um, when you draw the box, you're going to have to make an, an educated guess and that would um, sort of be easier for you. So but if you're making if you're not very sure about your perspective skill i would recommend you drawing those perspective line out um, because if your line line up wrong in some way you say if this one is not tapered or it's not the line is not going to the same destination or the line is kind of out of alignment then you screw because they're not going to be as what you want them to be. Um, and the, some of them might be off and you might not know how to figure out because you kind of still not have, you still don't have a lot of experience in drawing this. So even if you know you, you get a perspective, you still like, uh, I could still make a mistake on some part because these are sort of like an obscure angle or a little bit harder to do uh, than the top down. The bottom up are always, uh, trickier than the top down. The top downs are easy because uh, the top down you're dealing with one um, one mesh which is the body down and the legs you don't see as much but the bottom up you see two parts so the tricky part is the legs the how you're gonna make them look convincingly enough that you kind of looking at them from the bottom and what if the legs are bending and all those things so um, those are usually pretty hard and that's why a lot of time you see just half of the body uh, sort of like looking up that would be easier so you kind of if you want to put something into the frame I would recommend you don't want to draw those legs because they look weird then you just have to kind of frame it by cutting the body in half or maybe from the knees up and all that because you don't need to see the bottom of the foot or you usually don't see the bottom of the foot anyways because sometimes you look into the holes and you're looking up and those um, those holes are going to have that line and that line is going to cut across from um, see if I have that line here which is and this will be like a staircase and there's a hole there then you're not going to see the, the bottom of the foot because the floor will block it and you see basically part 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 of the body partially and if you would see the bottom of the foot or something like that it would be uh, one of the previous video that I did uh, about the foreshortening or the punching and kicking so those would be the case most likely um, unless uh, you draw Doctor Strange or somebody who's, who can float in the sky then those will probably be um, somewhat you would see that one or two person so and as you add the grid or add the box then you can draw more people right so just apply the same thing and if you want to do more then just do more extreme one like as you move upward uh, or coming closer to this area then it's going to be even more extreme see what I mean because the shorter range for the body now something like that and the bottom half probably has to be really big the foot right so anyways those are just pretty um, super simple um, example all right guys well uh, let's get started on drawing I hope uh, this tu tutorial uh, helped you guys somehow if you have any question please 
please post them down in the comment and if you have any um, just want to say hi or any request or any um, suggestion on tutorial or what you like to see uh, also post them down below and all right here we go in this one i'm using a sketchbook pro on ipad but you can use whatever you like just pencil and paper pen and paper whatever program whatever software whatever hardware so I'm just creating the tree line that tapered up like I explained to you earlier in the previous section. Um, then I sort of guesstimately uh, breaking this box down into half uh, uh, horizontally and then vertically. So we got like a, a cylinder uh, box with um, the height breaking in half and the half size is going to help me identify uh, where the waistline would be. But the waist, you have to realize that the waistline is floating along that front line of the box and back line of the box. So it's in right around the middle. So the line actually is going to be in between those two lines, two horizontal lines in the front and in the back of the box. Then I kind of create the um, stick figure um, you i'm trying to use some sort of a cylinder or um, an oval cylinder shape i'm not sure what those call probably still a cylinder or, or a kind of taper cylinder or similar to almost a cone shape um, because this is going to be a looking up so on the top it's going to be slimmer than the bottom and this is very tricky um, you might not get it the first trial uh, usually I also have a hard time doing these when I'm doing the foot um, so those are gonna have to come with practice and a lot of observation it probably would be easier if you have a reference with if you've never done this before uh, or you can just you know look at my tutorial and if you want to download a JPEG to look at which is a pretty bad drawing I would say then just let me know. I'll post the link to my JPEG file or my image file so that you can download and kind of check those. Or you can go to Pinterest or wherever. Um, I'm sure there are a lot of uh, tutorial um, that are still image like this. Um, they might be similar, they might be different, but it's along the same line of using the same technique um, to get the result. Anyways, so now I'm starting to fill in the hard line. The bottom part of the body is going to be hard, like the crotch part. Um, those are tricky. Uh, and especially if you have an extreme um, point of view, this is, this is the point of view that we use most, uh, mostly in cinematic or um, yeah, sort of video game. Sometimes you're looking the way up. Um, if we are looking more extreme perspective than this, then you will probably hardly see it we can we hardly ever use any more uh, extreme than this but this one is uh, mostly used if you've seen in the cinematic and whatever it is um, but if you decided to draw a little more extreme like looking kind of almost straight up from the body then you have to kind of consider why are you doing it or what are you doing it for um, but if you're doing it for the composition or to find interesting um, perspective within the frame um, then this would be the one that you this angle would be the one you're looking for any more extreme than this would be kind of hard to to tell or uh, that what kind of you know angle they are at or um, it would be kind of weird and not flattering to look at so uh, this view is probably a lot more flatter than the others but uh, so we got this first one here, which is not too much of an extreme perspective. And as we move along, we're just going to I'm going to finish this pretty roughly. So it's not going to be a, a very clean or a very uh, solid drawing. Beautiful. Uh, this is just a demo. So and I'm drawing is basically in real time. So anyways, and on the fist or on the hand, if you have like a open hand that's going to be kind of tricky too unless 
uh, you bend the finger a little bit, then you're gonna see um, the sort of like a fist like. But for the fist, it's kind of easier because you can see the the flat part of the knuckle first, and then you see the back of the hand as the perspective from the side. So you have to think of it as a box. And if you are wondering uh, how to draw the fist or the hand or something like that, you can go search um, YouTube. Uh, how to draw fist or how to draw hand and search my name Zia Teftara on top of it or uh, plus um, yeah just search drawing anything with my name you might find something um, because I have a lot of video on YouTube and some of them are kind of like buried deep in there that uh, some of you might have never seen anyways um, so I'm kind of done with the first one and then I'm going to add another box right next to it. So you can add more box and you can add more line to multiply or adding those box um, and keep practicing drawing the crowd in perspective because those are going to be very useful rather than just one figure standing alone because um, in, in the context of storytelling or in the context of composition, uh, you probably gonna see more than a person if you see uh, a group of crowd and also it would be pretty useful if you can apply some environment in there also um, I also have those environment um, in perspective in an eye view top eye view and drawing environment in perspective it's on my gum road so you can go download them they're about like two hours long and different type of perspective and different type of environment and I show you how to it just drawing environment with the perspective and also with um, the point of view that you see here. So you can kind of look at those and apply those onto these rather than just drawing the perspective alone. So go check it out on gumroad.com slash CSFTR or uh, I think QBrush might happen to QBrush.co slash my name. So anyways, um, because to know, to, to be able to draw this in the scene very convincingly, um, going to take time to practice. And I make this guy right next to this box kind of bending his knee a little bit, so it's a bit tricky. So the one of the cylinder, which is the upper legs, it's a bit in angle, and the chin and the lower part of your legs are uh, in, the, in the forefront. Then the arm. So just start everything with the cylinder that you see me drawing here. Um, it's going to be a lot easier and then once you compose your set and you have to realize that everything is kind of taper up so things will get smaller and smaller as it goes up and uh, the body will be shorter and the legs usually will get kind of longer and as it come closer or moving up the vertical axis of the screen then you're gonna see less and less length of the body so the more extreme perspective the shorter the body will get and as it coming if there's another guy or another person standing in front of the first guy uh, then he or she will be uh, shorter than usual because you're gonna see that in a perspective so and then again um, you try to draw the bottom part of the object if you are seeing them like you seeing uh, the second guy I'm drawing here, you see the knuckle part of the fist and you see the bottom of the foot or the shoes. Um, those are very important. And reason being, trying to think, because a lot of time when I, um, I often see like a lot of beginners uh, arranging their composition or when they're trying to draw sequential art in comics or people interact with each other, um, they tend to make it a little bit too two-dimensional. So when you have this technique and apply this technique onto your drawing, this might help you get away or the way around making your stuff look 3D because a lot of time I'll see people lining up one on the left and one on the right rather than just kind of move them up or move them down a little bit or adding some level, which those are part of the composition. And um, there's a lot more to composition than you uh, realize. So now I'm adding another person on well, the third person here. This one is going to be tricky. It's going to get harder as it comes forward to the screen um, because the more extreme, the harder it will get. And without the reference or something to look at, then it could be pretty challenging. 
So I'm just going to do my best to kind of draw this out just because I have more time left, I guess. So like I said, um, to, where was I? Oh, um, composition and all those things can help you define uh, it a more of a third dimension or a three-dimensional look uh, like looking at the building the different way like if you go out and look into the street try to view it in terms of like rather than viewing it on the wall straight uh, try to look at it from the corner and then you see that perspective is a little more interesting that way and try to frame like you know put two feet put put the frame in your in front of your eyes and try to see it in the frame and then try to look for the composition and if you want to know more about composition you can go to my channel and look for um, why or how to create a good composition and then see a tip title on it and you'll find a video on the composition and or I will put uh, the card up here so that I can link that video down here because it's very important to know the composition a lot of time people think they know something and they're trying to put everything in the center I mean most of the time your eye will go for the center anyway so when you put something in the center then you just look at the dead center so that's why the composition kind of steer you away from looking at the center and having you look at a certain point in this grid then your eye will kind of go around and all over the picture and that's the point of the composition and if your composition is good then it will be easier for you to work into the detail into the image rather than not having the composition and put a bunch of detail that people would never see because you don't lead their eyes to be uh, to see what you intended them to see or what you wanted them to see anyway guys all right i guess um well no not really there's a lot of drawing still so you can just keep watching and i might be you know quiet for some time um well i'm start bowing now anyways yeah uh tomorrow we'll upload again uh and hopefully it'll be like some animal drawing i'm not sure uh, i have a lot of videos uh, that i haven't uh, do the voiceover but um yeah all right guys i will see you around and thank you for watching don't forget to click like and if you want to subscribe feel free have a great day